Ooh, I'm at something. Seaweed. Or is it? That's not a seaweed, that one. Either I got a big fish or I'm in a lot of seaweed. Oh! You see that? Hold on now. Hold on now. I gotta get down here. Oh! Oh, okay. Yeah. Small mouth. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm not the best at this part. Oh. Hold on now. I got you, bro. A little something. A little something. <laughs> wow. First cast. Wow, that's the Detroit River for you, though. So Detroit is pretty much home base to me. Like, I've had opportunities to go with different teams. Um, I could have went with the Saints as a rookie. Could have gone to the Raiders last year. Um, but it's just home, man. It just feels like home. Yeah. All right. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put them back. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I cast and I'm like, I'm like, either that's a big fish or that's some seaweed. So I keep reeling and I see the fish jump. I'm like, dang. I ain't expect to catch that fish though. I should have took a picture. <laughs> I should have took a picture. My girl not gonna believe me. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> Let me call her real quick. Oh, that's funny. Hey baby, <laughs> guess what? Guess what? Are you caught a fish? Yes, first cast. <laughs> Look. So you got it? What, what was it? It was a uh, smallmouth. First one. That's the first smallmouth I caught before. Good job. Oh, man. That's crazy. So we met, uh, we met at Wayne State. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we met at Wayne State and um, freshman year, you know, she walks up to me and she said I look like someone. And, you know, she was trying to, you know, start a conversation. That's crazy. Good job. I'm a, this is my new spot. I'm about to come over here. That's crazy. Okay, All right, I'll talk okay. to you. All right, All right ciao. ciao. <laughs> so this is freshman year, and, you know, we're friends throughout the years, you know, hanging out casually. and. You know, my senior year, um, I really got my, you know, got things together. You know, I was serious about, you know, football, serious about academics and everything. And so I felt like I was, you know, I was, you know, ready. So I wanted her to be my girlfriend. And now, uh, you know, we're in our third year of dating. And, you know, she's my best friend. We're not traveling, you know, we're finding new food, places to eat, you know, we're going to the movies, we love the movies. You know, we can just do anything. We love going on late night drives and listening to music and just talking. So, I mean, she's my best friend, so we, we just sit on the couch and watch TV or uh, anything. We do anything and she balances me out. Uh, she's taught me to enjoy life, I would say that, because I can be very, very hard on myself, you know, very, I put a lot of pressure on myself to do, to be the best and, and be right and work hard, you know, so much that I'm not even focused on enjoying or being grateful for my situation. So she just gives me perspective and makes me understand that, you know, you're doing better than you think you are. So don't be so hard on yourself. So, and I need that, you know, it's, it's always great having someone like that in your corner. So, 
Grew up in Detroit, on the west side of Detroit, um, over on Linwood and Davidson. It can be hard growing up in Detroit, um, growing up in poverty, you know. I was fortunate enough for my mom to be able to provide for me, and I feel like I've seen both sides in terms of living in Detroit most of my childhood and then moving out to Birmingham for my high school. I feel like I've seen it all. Once you kind of experience one side of things, and then you, you know, you see what life could be like on the other side. Like, you don't wanna, you don't wanna go back to how things were on one side. Seeing others, you know, struggling in poverty, and it just hurts to see people stuck in a position where they can't get out. I feel like that's no way to live for anyone. I just, I empathize with those people. Um, I don't know, man. It's gotta be. There's gotta be some way, like, these people can be helped. You know, they, it can't just be, you know, hopeless for these people. Me and my girlfriend decided, it was really her idea, you know, she's like, there's something we can do. You know, we would package together about 50 meals, you know, it's just us two, you know, get in our car on a Saturday morning and just drive around ask people if they wanted meals. And I remember I remember it very clear. This one lady, we drove and we gave her a meal. And she was so surprised that, you know, we offered her food and she was like, oh, this is this is just what I needed right now. You know, this is exactly what I needed. And um, you know, I'll never forget that. And you know, it's just something small that we were able to do, you know, to to give back. It's the best view of the city right here. You know, see the whole skyline. You know, if you're from Detroit, you know, you know about Belal. It's pretty much the nature of the city. You know, you come out, grill, hang out with family. You know, my mom would pick, pick us up after school. You know, I still have my school uniform on. We'd come out to Belal. You know, and I've been coming here for about 10, 10, 12 years, just enjoying the water, man, enjoying the nature. You know, get my mind away from football. You know, hit the reset button. And uh, oh, I think it's important. I just, I feel like I always live my life it will be an example for who you will want, you know, a younger person to be. I just want to win at everything. Just win in life, win at being a boyfriend, you know, and a husband soon. Win at being a father. You know, when, when I have kids, I want to win at being a friend. I want to win at being a community leader, win at being a teammate. I think about that often. How can I be better? You know, I'm real hard on myself, and that's just because I want to be the best. Hey, Ma, checking in with you. I'm fishing right now. Oh, you are? Yeah. Caught a nice little smallmouth bass. Like just, I just, oh, cool. I just threw it out there first cast. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So, and then I was thinking, you remember when uh, I first started fishing back in the day? How I caught that fish on the bamboo, the bamboo pole. Remember when I got like the biggest fish award at the at the uh, Boy Scout camp? Mm-hmm. She's in Georgia right now, so. I'm not able to see her as often as I'd, uh, you know, like to. But even now, she still calls me and, and says, uh, you know, you need me to, you need me to show you how to do this pass rush move, or you need me to show you how to, how to tackle. Or she said, uh, no, this is a funny one. She said, uh, you know, your arms are looking kind of small on the field. You know, I'm gonna send you some videos how to get your biceps bigger. She's all in the game. She's all in the news, you know, studying the Lions and studying football. So she, uh, she's still trying to help me. You guys have an opportunity to show what you're really made of. I and, feel that. And, and you know what? You know, when I reflect about, like, it didn't matter, like, where you went. 
what community you were in, you were able to make connections with people. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think that's your gift. It's like just people from different walks of life and different communities and different, just different places. Like they all, you all, you found a way to connect with everyone. I mean, I feel like that's what life is, you know? Everyone's so different in this life. And I feel like once you accept that people are gonna be different, you can learn to like, appreciate them for what they are. That's the thing with football. Like in the locker room, you got all kind of different players, you know? People who like, you know, jazz, rap, soul, like anything, man. But we all come together for a common purpose. And, you know, Coach Campbell said it, like if the world was like the locker, the locker room, the world would be a better place because we're all different. You know, it's, you can't conform a certain people to be one way or another way. It's like you just appreciate each other for what we are, and, and I feel like that's what life should be. I'm just proud of the man that you've become. I'm proud that you get to be a part of your home team, the, the Detroit Lions. That's why I'm here. So. I know. That's that's why you stay. Yeah. It's something about the city. It's something about you know our connection to the city. Yeah. It it just it grows great things. That's just Detroit. That's, that's just the that's, Detroit spirit. That's Detroit. Plan for the city that I grew up in, and the city that I went to college in, watching Detroit Lions play throughout the years. I'm just proud to be on the team. I never thought I would be playing professional football. You know, it's, it's, it's funny because when I, when I first came in as a rookie and I'm in the locker room, I'm like, wow. And even to this day, I'm still like, I'm in the NFL. Like, like this is my job. I look at the, the crowd and the fans and, you know, it just, it just feels like home. So I'm just grateful. Thank you. And keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah. Well, thanks, Ma. I appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate you, too. Okay. I love you. I love you, too. I'll call you soon, okay? Okay. All right. Bye-bye. My mom sacrificed. Whatever she needed to do, she was going to do it for her kids. And she sacrificed for me. That's that may be where I get it from. You know, wanting to help others. Because she would go out the way. She would do whatever she needed to do for me. Yeah, she's something else. I am Anthony Pittman.